If we look at the 70 second cycle time, you will find that Linsig has put all the aheads on route 11, we're experiencing a delay of 32.75 seconds and none of the aheads in the offside lane. Now the reason for that is Linsig knows, because it's tried it, even if it puts as little as one PCU on that route, it will experience more than 32.75 seconds of delay. Now I can actually prove that to you and this will now show you how to do route locking. Let's say, for example, if I were to click that zero, double click that zero, I can change that zero to one PCU and I can lock it. Okay. I then need to do a reassignment and a re-optimize. And what you'll find is sure enough, and there's the one PCU that is now using that route. And if you look at the delay, on route 11, the average delay 32.53. On route four, the average delay 34.26. So you can see that's why Linsig didn't put anybody in that who wants to go ahead in that offside lane because they would experience more delay than if they'd all gone in the near side lane. Now, of course, you may look at this and say it's not realistic. There is bound to be a case, drivers haven't got perfect knowledge about delay. There is bound to be a case where at least one PCU is going to get in that offside lane who wants to go ahead, regardless of the fact that they're going to experience more delay. Well, that is a legitimate observation if you make that observation. And what you could do to make your models more robust, if you like, you could say that we know that at least one PCU per cycle who wants to go ahead is going to use that route. Well, it's a simple calculation. If it's a 70 second cycle time, let's say there are what? Something like 50 70 second cycle times in the hour. Simply lock the route to 50. So if I double click that number one, change it to 50 leave it locked, redo an assignment, and redo an optimization, and sure enough, there's the 50.